name of God, the most beneficent, the most merciful. Praise be to Him, the All-Knower and the All-Seeing, the Creator of this world, the Creator of mankind, the Creator of all creations. And I start by His name, and I send peace and blessings upon Muhammad and his holy progeny. And I send my salam and my commemoration to my Imam, my awaited Savior, Sahib al Asr wa Zaman. May Allah hasten his reappearance. I send him my sad, I send him my sadness and my tears on this occasion of the martyrdom of the Lady of Light, Fatima al Zahra, peace be upon her. These sad, oppressive nights, these nights in which my lady faced tyranny and oppression from the tyrants of the Ummah. We will continue our journey in speaking about Lady Fatima, peace be upon her. And today we have planned for you, my dear viewers, a very interesting topic. Today we will be speaking about the famous well-known hadith that is reported by Rasulullah, peace be upon him and his family. He said, Fatimah al-Zahra bada'atun minni فَمَنْ آذَاهَا فَقَدْ آذَانِي وَمَنْ آذَانِي فَقَدْ آذَ اللَّهِ This report is a famous, well-known, established report. It is interesting. It is very interesting that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sometimes puts the proof and the hujjah in the mouths, in the books, in the sermons, of the enemy himself. A man by the name of Bukhari. Bukhari whom compiled a well-known book called Sahih al-Bukhari whom is well-known and accepted amongst the Mukhalifin ijma'an. There is consensus amongst all four schools of the Mukhalifin that the text of Bukhari, his book of hadith, his book of reports, traditions and sayings of the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him and his holy family, is a book that is authentic in terms of his standards. And if you want, you should go read about the standards in which Bukhari accepts hadith and rejects hadith. Then you will know how staunch he is when it comes to narrating from Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon them. And sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts the hujjah on the mouth of the enemy himself. You see Bukhari in his Sahih, Sahih al-Bukhari has not narrated a single tradition from Imam al-Sadiq, peace be upon him. He has not narrated a single tradition from Imam al-Sadiq, peace be upon him, and whom the Mukhalifin themselves, all four schools, the Hanafi and Maliki and Shafi'i and Hanbali, all four schools, where did they get their knowledge from? Abu Hanifa says, if it wasn't for my two years with a Sadiq, I would have been destroyed. Everyone goes back to Ja'far ibn Muhammad and al-Sadiq alayhi salam. Yet al-Bukhari in his Sahih has not narrated a single tradition from Imam al-Sadiq, peace be upon him. At the same time though, Al-Bukhari narrates this hadith. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Praise be to Allah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made Bukhari speak the truth. For he has narrated this hadith on the authority of the Messenger of Allah, Muhammad, peace be upon him, who said that Fatima is a part of me. Fatima is from me. Fatima is a piece of me. I am from Fatima and Fatima is from me. Meaning that whoever hurts Fatima has hurt me and whoever has hurt me has hurt Allah and angered Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Go and read about the hadith. It's a well-known tradition that is found in the books of the Mukhalifi. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed Fatima al Zahra, peace be upon her, as the column as the flag, as the pillar in which when questions begin to arise, when people begin to ask questions about what happened to Fatima al-Zahra. 
Why did Fatima al-Zahra, peace be upon her, die while she was angry with Abu Bakr and Umar? Why? It's well established, and I'll read to you the Nas right now as well. Why? See, the believer who ponders and who looks for the truth begins to ask these questions. He reads in his Sahih that Sayyidah Fatima, my lady, peace be upon her, died while she was angry with Abu Bakr and Umar, as Aisha herself narrates. The hadith is found in Sahih al-Bukhari, volume 4, book 53, hadith 325, in the English version. Or if you want in the Arabic version, it is hadith number 3998. The hadith is from Aisha herself. She says, إن فاطمة عليه السلام بنت النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أرسلت إلى أبي بكر وعمر تسائله ميراثها. She went, Fatima bint Muhammad went to Abu Bakr and Umar to ask Abu Bakr about her mirath, about the inheritance that Rasulullah, peace be upon him and his family, left for her, left for Fatima al Zahra, peace be upon her. This is when Abu Bakr fabricated a hadith that goes against the Quran and the Sunnah. He says, Rasulullah, peace be upon him, said that لا نورث ما تركناه صدقة. He says that I, that I heard the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him and his family, that we do not inherit. What we leave is for charity. Of course, this goes against the Quran and the Sunnah. If one reads the Quran, we will find many instances where a Prophet left inheritance for his family members. The most important part of the hadith lies here. It says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, لا نورث ما تركناه صدقة. Then it says here, remember this is Aisha talking, it's not anybody talking here. Aisha is the one who's testifying. She says, فَأَبَى أَبَى بَكِرْ أَنْ يُتْفَعَ إِلَى فَاطِمَةَ مِنْهَا شَيْءٌ فوجد فَوَجَدَتْ فَاطِمَةَ عَلَى أَبِي بَكِرْ فِي ذَلِكَ فَهَجَرَتْهُ فَهَجَرَتْهُ فَلَمْ تُكَلِّمْهُ حَتَّى تَمُوتْ حَتَّى تُوفِّيَتْ وعاشت بعد النبي صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم ستة أشهر فاطمة peace be upon her Aisha herself says she says she got angry with Abu Bakr and she did not speak to him for six months six months she did not speak to him then she died in the six months and she was angry with him and the anger of Fatima is the anger of Allah. Now I ask you, my dear viewer, and you Mukhalif that is watching me right now, I ask you to listen to the words of Fatima. Fatima, peace be upon her, died when she was angry with Abu Bakr and Umar for what happened. Another hadith narrated by Ibn Qutayba in his Imam wa Siyasa, he says, that Abu Bakr and Umar went to Fatima al Zahra to go talk, to speak to her, to go ask her to forgive them. Fatima alayhi salam told them, Have you not heard the hadith from Rasulullah saying, In ghadab Fatima ghadab Allah, that the anger of Fatima is the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Have you not heard this hadith? Do you testify that you heard this hadith from Rasulullah? They said, yes, Ibn Rasulullah. Yes, we have heard this hadith from Rasulullah, peace be upon him and his family. Fatima then says, Wallah. She says, by Allah, you have hurt me. By Allah, you have angered me. Listen, by Allah, you have hurt me. By Allah, you have angered me. And then she says, لِأَدْعُوَنَّ عَلَيْكُمْ بِكُلِّ صَلَاةٍ أُصَلِّيهَا That, O oh, Abu Bakr and Umar, I will pray 
to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to remove his mercy from you in every single prayer that I pray. And the ma'soom prays the wajib and the recommended, the obligatory prayer and the recommended prayers. And Fatima said this to their faces. She says, I will pray against you in every single prayer. Because they hurt Fatima. Her oppression is not just her inheritance that was taken away. We will discuss insha'Allah the oppression that Sayyidah Fatima went through. To conclude, we have this beautiful ihtijaj, this beautiful argument we want to tell our dear viewers. We know that the hadith of Fatima Bada'atun Minni, Fatima as a part of me, is a well known established hadith. There is a story narrated by Al Allam Al Hilli. Allam Al Hilli was about to meet one of the ulama of Ahl al Khilaf. He wanted to meet one of the ulama of the Mukhalifin and he sent his son. Fakhr al to go and meet this man at the Bawaba, at the door of the city. This man came and Al Allam al Hilli's son met this man and he said to him, while they were walking towards Al Allam al Hilli's house, they said to him, Hal hadha al Hadith. صحيح عندكم من مات ولم يعرف إمام زمانه مات ميتة جاهلية. He asked this alim. He said, "Is this hadith authentic and sahih with you guys? Is this hadith authentic in terms of your what methods and ways?" He said, "Yes, this hadith is sahih." He asked a very interesting and beautiful question. He tells him, Man kan, man kana Imam Fatima. Remember, they're still walking towards the house of Al Allam Al Hilli. He said, Then who was the Imam of Fatima? I ask you now. This is when the Mukhalif, this is when the person asking the question will not get an answer. Why? He asked him, who was the Imam of Fatima? If he says that Fatima to Zahra, God forbid, died without an Imam, that means that Fatima to Zahra, peace be upon her, died a death of ignorance. Because من مات ولم يعرف إمام زمانه مات ميتة جاهلية. So did Fatima, peace be upon her, die a death of ignorance? The guy said, no. God forbid that the daughter of, the, of Muhammad, the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, and his family, dies the death of ignorance. Okay. The second question, then was her Imam, Imam Ali alayhi salam? Now, if he says yes, then this refutes that Abu Bakr is the Khalifa after Rasulullah. Because if Imam Ali is the rightful appointed successor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how can Imam Ali alayhi salam or how can Abu Bakr be the first if Imam Ali is the Imam of Fatima, peace be upon her? So you see, no matter what angle you attack, every question refutes itself. The third question, was her Imam Abu Bakr? Remember, she has to have an Imam. Was her Imam Abu Bakr? If her Imam is Abu Bakr, how is it? that her Imam is Abu Bakr and Fatima to Zahra died and there is consensus amongst the entire school of Islam that she died and she was angry with Abu Bakr. Why? It's impossible. No matter where you go, every question refutes itself. And what happened here? Before they even got to the house of Al-Allam Al-Hilli, the man left. What is he going to do? The original plan was for them to go and speak about wilaya and speak about imama of Ali ibn Abi Talib, peace be upon him. And even that failed because he knows if he gets to Allam al Hilli, Allam al Hilli will even give more refutations and more arguments. Three questions Who was her imam? 
Was it Ali ibn Abi Talib or was it Abu Bakr? No matter where you go, every question refutes itself. That is why Sayyid Muhammad Allah Shirazi, when he speaks about Fatima al Zahra, peace be upon her, he says that when the qadiyya, when the events, when the questions comes towards Fatima al Zahra, peace be upon her, everything ends. The secrets unveil. Because Fatima is the pillar of wilaya and Fatima is the pillar of bara'a. Fatima is the pillar of divine leadership and Fatima is the pillar of disassociation. When questions come to say the Fatima, peace be upon her, every single question is answered. Every secret that lies behind the door unveils. This is Fatima Zahra, peace be upon her. The pillar and the star wherein everything comes to an end. Insha'Allah, you will join us on the next episode where we will dive more into the life of Fatima and the merits of Fatima, peace be upon her, so that we may be able to get towards the tragedy of Sayyidah Fatima, peace be upon her. Peace be upon you, my lady. Peace be upon you, my Imam, the master of my time, Imam al-Mahdi al-Muntadar. May Allah hasten his reappearance. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Mm-hmm.